afternoon viewers. Events had the occurrences with which we count our lives and they had the makers by which we say we have Maybe we've, we've had happy yes. times and very undesirable times. You know, there are times like that in our lives, just like what is happening around us at the moment. It is the unit by which human counts their lives on. And I say again, excellent afternoon to all those who are watching us across the globe. My name is Kekelo Matondawa. And of course, I have the real talk on the platform today. Masha, let me come to you first. How are you doing? Uh-uh. What uh -uh. be counselor? Uh -uh. You know, you know, <laughs> Prophetess uh, Dami, <laughs> Kike, you know how it, people say it's infectious when you are down. And when you come say, Masha, how are you doing? That's not how you used to introduce me, baby. <laughs> Firebrand, fuck it up. What's wrong with you? How are you doing? I'm yeah, <laughs> <laughs> There you have it, Kike. It's good to be on the show today. And I want to say it's my pleasure. We missed you last week. Last time I was on the show. I had to host, I had to sit on that seat. It's a hot seat, oh. Eh, <laughs> As in really burning, hot burning hot. Wow. Very hot. How are you doing, Kike? Um, I'm well. You look beautiful as thank usual. You. Yes. Thank and you. And Prophetess sure. Dami, how are you doing? <laughs> The peace of the Lord be with everybody. Amen. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon, everybody, from wherever you're watching us. It's another beautiful, bright, happy day for us too here. We're sure that is the same with you. Please keep it locked down with us. Real Talk with Kike is just about to start. All right, Pojo was one of the reigning cars a few decades ago, and they were like, like I told Marshall before we came on there, mm. they were like the Toyotas of nowadays. Nice. So let's hear a bit of what happened to them in history on, a, on this day in history, in history segment. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. <sighs> Wake up. On this day in history, exactly 15 years ago, in 2007, January 25, Nigeria divested 24.87% of its equity in the early Peugeot automobile of Nigeria, PAN, while the French government also considered to shed 30% interest in the company, which was turned over at ASD Motors Nigeria. In November 2006, PAN was privatized in line with government's agenda to build a stronger, more competitive, and diversified economy. ASD Motors emerged as a successful core investor and took over management of the company in January 2007. The expectation was that the privatization of PAN could create a quantum leap in performance, but that has not happened as planned. Following the accumulation of huge non-performing loans, NPL indebtedness to banks. In October 2012, the asset manager company of Nigeria, APCON, acquired the debts of the company and converted a portion to equity to help restructure the firm. Right, exactly 15 years ago, 2017, I think that uh, on this day in history segment, if you ask me, what I'm taking away from this is the fact that, you know, um, Pojo was in existence and ASD Motors took over within five years and afterwards they were doing well. But, you know, there's something about Nigerians or Nigeria in particular when it comes to entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Because as far as I'm concerned, I just feel that uh, Pojo is still gaining momentum internationally yeah. till date. You know, and like I said in my intro, you know, Pojo is like the Toyota Camry of today. And I want to relate it to our music. You know, I know we are talking about cars, but if you... If you if you pay attention carefully to the music industry, you realize that we don't have evergreen songs. It's, and anymore. the songs that we have do, many years yes, ago that. are what is still relevant till date. It's all about beat, judinye, something, something, expose your body and the life. Commercializing you have, of women. You don't have evergreen songs. And that's exactly what is going on here as well, especially relating it to entrepreneurship, relating it to music, relating it to something that has become a culture when it comes to um, consistency whatever mm. thing we do mm. but Masha what's your take on this? You just said it well Kike consistency and the futuristic a uh, long term uh, most companies or most uh, entrepreneurs we found in Nigeria are not in need for the long haul they easily throw in the towel when there's a challenge and then they also <laughs> fail to plan uh, Pujo, uh, Pan was Pujo Automobile of Nigeria, Nigeria. Pan um, Pujo as a company still exists and it's still strong, waxing and strong. Still but you know, what happened to ASD Motors was very unfortunate. We've seen several multinationals come in, base their station in Nigeria, and then get taken over by indigenous, indigenous uh, uh, management. And then before you know what's happening, they just crumble. It's unfortunate. 
Dami. I think um, for me, same thing, both of you have said it the most because um, one thing I know that Nigerians lack and we are still lacking till today is maintenance. We do not know how to maintain. A few days back, I was saying that the Lagos State Governor went to sign a train, light train bond. And the problem is not buying the train, but the problem is maintaining it yeah. at the long run. At the end of the day, maintenance would have brought up what happened to PAN, Pojo, and into ASD. And now we are here. And even Amcon that, is, that took over, we've not really heard anything that has happened afterwards. So I, I, I even saw in the news that even the Amcon MD, um, Ahmed Kuru, was being quizzed by EFCC over sales of assets and all of that. And we just keep going in circles. But I hope that maybe next dispensation will begin to have um, a government that truly cares about maintaining the values that we have, our heroes past have put together. All right, event management in Nigeria goes beyond uh, mere arrangement of events and, of course, setting up a party because I know that nowadays the management and the glamour of um, all the functions or our functions determines the impression of the people attending the event. And what do I mean by that? If you attend a wedding function and uh, or an award uh, gala yeah, night gala and night. all of that, you will see all the big or bigger glamour and how glitz, glitz and how the Impression out there, yeah. you know, goes beyond just uh, attending the event, but yeah. also leaving good impression in the mind of the guests. But today, I haven't said that we have that in, we have a lot that we're going to be talking about when it comes to glitz and glamour at events and the branding, the presentation, uh, the preparation, the pricing, and of course, business aspect of it all. So on the show today, uh, we have an ACE event management Alfie with us, and that is a event adventure uh, event event group, event which was group. built as a design and outfit with a major focus on the entertainment and fashion and retail and leisure and of course hospitality in, in total. All right, welcome to the show, Mr. and Mrs. Olatun G. Daniels. How are you both doing today? Oh, very well, thank you. Thank Hello, you for thank having you. us. Uh, for having us. You're it's welcome. Great. All right, let's just go straight to the point because I know that event Event texture, right? Event Correct. Event yeah. All right. Yes. You have an interesting profile because going through your profile, I kept on wondering, hmm, what a, what an achievement that both of you are able to at least break Put since together. you've started um, this event industry in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I must ask you, what makes you different in the industry? You know, knowing that there are quite a number of people out there, hundreds of people in the event planning industry in Nigeria, more so. Um, when it comes to maybe before I say before I touch on CSR, what do you have to say to that? Let me come to you first. Women first. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, yeah. So, event architecture is event architecture that we infused together. Okay. And um, what makes us different from everyone is the fact that all we need you to do is just think about whatever it is you want to accomplish for your event, and we will make it happen. So, if you can think it, event architecture will build it. And um, we do not play with the quality and the excellence. We just need you to just chill and then we get to work. All you need to do is just come for your event and voila, everything is perfect. Mm. Okay. Well, so if I hear you clearly, what, what I, I'm, I'm saying is the aesthetics, the um, overall aesthetics, the sound, the stage, the sets, you're involved in all of that multimedia arrangement. Yes. It's a total package. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right? Yes. Absolutely. Then I'd, I'd say that uh, beyond event planning, beyond event management, I'd, I'd, my interest would be what contribution financially or how much do you think that you know your industry now, event texture industry, if I may put it that way, contributes to the uh, uh, tourism, event and tourism industry in Nigeria? Well, um, let's look at it this way. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, an informal phenomenon uh, started, uh, was informally nicknamed Dirty December. Hmm. And it's become a worldwide phenomenon. Um, even without any formalization of that, people troop to Nigeria in droves in December because they are guaranteed to have a good time, mm -hmm. their concerts back to back, their all sorts of entertainment and all of that. So um, even aside from December, even through the year, there's so many things, you know, that attract Fun people. Event. Yes, you know, so 
Uh, it's a really growing industry um, and we're doing great things, if I may say so. I, I think my, 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 I want to distinguish event texture, event yes. architect. Who is the architect? <laughs> <laughs> Who is the event planner? <laughs> I think I'll use myself as an example. I think in mm. 2008, I ventured into event planning too. Mm -hmm. And I saw a lot of your videos. You were doing event docu series or something. Yes, I, I went through your page. Yes. And it only opened my head to two people. One person must be the architect and one person must be the planner. So, event texture, what God has joined, even event cannot scatter. But now, how do you guys run with Nigerians at large? Because looking through your page and um, so many aesthetics that you do, making conceptualization yeah. is tough. So how do you work with Nigerians with our attitude to work, especially when you have deliverables? Okay, so for that, um, we have quite a number of people who um, work with our team. They're like the team members with us. And honestly, um, we won't be where we are today without our team members. Like, they have bought into the dream. You, I, I feel like most times people get into the entrepreneurial work and just make it about themselves. No, it isn't. You're calling people in to join you, to like put your hands together and make this thing grow exponentially. So here's the thing. They have to buy into your dream. How do they buy into your, your dream? They have to be made to feel like they belong. Ownership culture? Yes. Once there is ownership, people will do unbelievable things for you. We have um, we have people who work in our organization. We have someone, we have two people. In fact, they are now grown to the level of management. They started with us when they were 18. Wow. Yeah. And, and they, they are in management. They are team leads. And, you know, there's nothing anyone can say to them. They'll tell you, we think you should do it this way. We think you should do it there. People have tried to push them severally. But they have bought into the dream of the organization. Mm -hmm. With our... Um, stakeholders in regards to maybe the clients um when people know that you offer excellence mm. they bow mm -hmm. you know so yes some people take things for granted but you need to be able to distinguish what who are you what do you have to offer and then when people come with nonsense you know you're quick to tell them i do not do business this way mm -hmm. you know it was nice knowing you and you can take this someplace else or if you really want us to do it we would like to follow certain processes. Process. We have processes in place for us to get our briefs done. So our team members, we're nothing without our team members. And, and then, of course, our clients. We have sold the dream of excellence to them. And they have bought it. Let me, let me put it, push a follow-up question to Mr. Daniel. How yeah. long does it take to conceptualize and put an event down, like average? Mm, that's a tricky one. <laughs> uh, especially in these clients where... Um, people tend to uh, take the emergency approach. Sharp, sharp, like A next week events. Yeah. <laughs> so um, your event is coming up in July. You've known about it since November last year, but then you come at the end of June and say, oh, my event is next week. Um, I want to build Disneyland. <laughs> 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 I will get that a lot. Um, so even though we have this uh, uh, miracle working uh, repetition. <laughs> mm -hmm. We've um, uh, had to make a lot of our clients to see that these things take time. It's a, a huge process that goes right from when we get the first phone call or email mm -hmm. um, to when we execute because we've had to put it down to sort of like a science to be able to ensure that every time we can produce excellence. So it has to go through some certain, you know, um, processes. So Typically, depending on the size of the brief, to answer your question, anything from um, a week to three weeks to months, sometimes, depending on... Quite achievable. Uh, yeah, yes. how, All right, fantastic. You know, let me come to you, you know, because I know that our words, our nomination, our feedbacks, you know, and I know that your outfits won the exper exper experiential, right? Yeah. Correct? Experiential. Marketing supplier of the year. Mm -hmm. 
and that's from EXMAN. Yeah, yeah. And I would like to ask you, as an events management outfit, how can you say, or how did your business, you know, stretch beyond that uh, exper experimental, experimental, uh, experimental, uh, mm -hmm. what they call it now, marketing? Mm -hmm. Because I know that everything is about marketing today. Everything is about about branding. So mm -hmm. have you been able to push beyond that? How have you been able to stretch yourself when it comes to your organization? Okay, so um, with X Man is the agency that the association that all of the agencies in Nigeria are under, and um, we are so grateful that. Um, the different agencies that work in Nigeria, well, for some wonderful reason, a lot of people come to us to get things done. Everyone, there's, there's word on the street says that if you want to get it done excellently, you come to Event Tech Shop. Sometimes people say, oh, but they're expensive. But they're like, if you want to get work done, you have to come to us. And like I mentioned earlier, um, our processes, it took us years to build it. I mean, um, we started from a mom and pop shop, from a dining table, in a very, very humble way. And then we have been able to substantiate, you know, we're like, okay, do we want to remain a mom and pop shop or yeah. do we want to scale? Scalable. And, you know, um, scaling came with a lot mm -hmm. of um, resources. We, we had to expend, too. yes, sacrifices. We had to expand on our resources financially. Um, um, intellectually, we had to go to school. We both had to go to school. In 2018, he went to um, Lagos Business School. And in 2019, I went to Lagos Business School also. And um, after all of that, we were able to scale our business, meaning uh, we had to put structure in place. You know, So yes, um, it's about excellence, but excellence comes with a price, yeah. which is um, a lot to do with how you intend to move your business forward in future. So uh, we find people like the association, X-Man, um, there are different agencies under X-Man. I mean, so um, they come to us and say, we need to get this thing done. Um, how do you want to do it? We need to do this. Um, can you come through for us? And over the years, um, they've seen us as reliable and competent, and we don't, we don't get high on our own supply. So it keeps getting better and better. So um, I, I feel like they saw it fit for us to win the award mm -hmm. because we are reliable um, and we, we, we are results oriented also. That's All right, great. so talking about winning the awards, you know, because I'm keen on um, giving back to the society, especially for successful entrepreneurs, you know, mm -hmm. and in terms of training and grooming people or grooming entrepreneurs uh, who are also in the same line of business with you, what are you doing regarding that, knowing that in an industry where COVID has affected your kind of business. What are you doing in grooming people who are behind you in terms of CSR? Okay, so um, we started um, um, a conference in 2018. 2018, a um, non-profit um, conference called Eventually, I mean events actually. Okay, so um, I think in 2016, 2017, I learned about um, a particular lady in the events industry who went about her trade you know, she was supplying something. And um, the sound from the speakers, there was, there was like a technical glitch and it affected our eardrums. Wow. Yeah, and, and it, was, it was really bad, you know. And, you know, they called for support, you know, to get her help and everything. And I thought, okay, so everybody is scurrying around to make ends meet. And you are just, God forbid, one event away from some disaster or mm. the other. Um, how do you get yourself covered? So... Um, we started this um, ev um, event eventually. Eventually, the event conference for event professionals. So we get people to come, people who have been in the event industry for over ten years, and people who we know that they are people of integrity, people who we know that their words are their bond, and they have um, this lineup of achievements. And then we also get somebody from a very reputable um, pillar in society, maybe something that has to do with finances, investments, and stuff. We've gotten Tomi Balogun, she's a, a millennial global investor, to talk to people about, it's not just about working, and it's not just about saving money. You also have to um, reinvest, because anything can happen. We also got somebody from Corporate Affairs, Mr. Jide Shikpe, to also come and speak. Um, 
on the importance of um, strategically placing your brand for success. We also got um, Mr. Bankoli Williams, who talks about the mind and productivity mm -hmm. on how yeah, to... A little mentorship do. there. Yes. Yeah. So we, 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 we get people from our industry and then one significant person from an area that is really important. Oh, people are lacking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, we do all of, the, all of that. But um, then COVID happened and then I got pregnant and I just had to take like a back burner for, for like a bit. But this year, God willing, eventually it's going to be back. Mm -hmm. Then aside from that, um, we were part of the um, Nigeria Institute of Architects okay. um, conference this year. We Lagos gave State. yeah the Lagos State chapter, and we, we like three open opportunities for people to come be interns at Eventecture to come learn, okay. and then also for our tenth anniversary, we also had um, we threw open our doors also to have people in the industry who have been here for about maybe five years okay. or to, to come. Learn, learn on our and processes read. and be a part of it. You know, when people hear you talk like this, and, and you know, people who are really doing well in their own industry, in their own turf or forte, um, one will just naturally build up a picture or imagination, imaginative pictures of how successful it is, how smooth it is, rosy. You know, I'd like you to talk about how challenging it has been as well. Mm -hmm. Dealing with people, people's expectations, especially logistics, in the society where we find ourselves where things uh, might not be so easily gotten. So what are some of the challenges you've had to face in invent texture? Uh, well, uh, anyone who's tried to run any sort of business in Nigeria can tell you that it's not necessarily the easiest of climbs. Um, so there have been a lot of challenges along the way. Um, a lot of which comes to the fact that, you know, you have to basically provide most of the infrastructure for yourself. You know, uh, like for example, you mentioned logistics. We've had to backward integrate our logistics. So we own our trucks and all of that because you can't really get reliable, reliable you know, logistics partners to do that for you. You know, over time we've had to backward integrate things like printing mm -hmm. as well. Um, but this is what I say, um, wherever there are problems, then there's opportunities for solutions mm -hmm. and that gives you opportunities as well. So, um, yeah, Nigeria might be a tough uh, place to, to, to um, operate mm -hmm. out of, but it just means as well that there's loads of opportunities available. Conversation is about branding, um, um, business, um, evolution, you know, name it in an event management. And we have with the founders and managers of event, event texture and uh, Mr. and Mrs. Olatsunji. Daniels, I feel that this event outfit, you know, won the stage as a designer of the year, you know, from the Association of uh, Professional Party Organizers. And I feel that the events managers of Nigeria themselves, which um, she's one of my ones in the, in the past, our poem, uh, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, we are with the dynamic and enterprising couples. Gosh, you know, listening to both of you, I can just say that. I need one couple like this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, don't forget that you can be part of this conversation by calling our studio number 80988 is showing on your screen right now. And remember that we are running live on YouTube page and um, Facebook page on Real Talk. We can kind of course on Silverberg platform as well. And like I said, when we're on break, that, you know, nice submission does far. But I must ask you, I know it is not easy thriving and su uh, succeeding, you know, in a business environment like Nigeria with all the likes that comes with running uh, a business. I know that I'm an entrepreneur as well. And also running platforms like this can be very, you know, challenging. But I must ask you, what are the challenges as size the finance, you know? Because when he asked you earlier that you should try to you know put it out there the challenge because you make it look as if it's so easy anybody can come into Bird event and planning and all of that because i know that the finances and the economy that we have right now mm -hmm. is not so friendly let me put it like that so are you working around it as a couple knowing that sometimes finances could be part of the issues when it comes to a couple running a business together well when it comes to finances um i think the f number one rule um, is discipline. Um, typically as entrepreneurs, we 
we have this um, urge to, <laughs> one of my lecturers in a business school used to call it dipping. So you're, you make a little money today, then you remember all the problems you have, then that is when <laughs> your family members will call, From somebody needs school fees, <laughs> somebody's in the hospital, you just go right there, you just take, uh, but it's not sustainable. Um, you know, initially people might think, oh, you're making money, blah, blah, but you have to have discipline. You have to, the first rule is to pay yourself a salary. Don't, and don't live beyond your means. Um, you have to ensure that you are building the business, unless you don't have plans to build it up to a certain level and all of that. Um, like Twain mentioned, you have to have secondary income by investing what you earn you know and all of that you know, so all of that takes discipline i think all of that takes putting structure into place um, as your business grows you start to have staff you have to have responsibilities you have to make sure that you don't ever renege on you know those um, contracts you have you have to always pay your staff you can't tell them excuses at the end of the month and say oh there was no business last month so you guys have to hold on so you know proper management is very very important and planning. Um, a lot of people don't budget, you know, for the year. People don't look at what their <coughs> revenues were, what their expenses are going to be. All those things are very important. So yes, um, on the surface it might look easy, but there's a lot of paddling. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think surface. that I want um, Tony to touch on this. You know, mm -hmm. I hear you. Mm -hmm. You know, but I feel that women, we've gotten a lot of feedbacks when it comes to you putting your businesses and uh, monies separately, just keep them apart, you know, keep them separated, you know. But I want you to touch on it. How do you forge ahead in your business as couple? Because I know that women, we have a lot of needs. You know, yes. we want to look good. Want to, like I was admiring your hair before you came into the studio. And I know that that comes with a lot of um, finances. That comes with a lot of, okay, how can I discipline Expense. myself in, you know, in terms of expenses? But touch on it with the kind of vision that you have for your organization as a couple and those who are also in such business. So um, there's this thing that we practice as a husband and wife. Um, we give one another freedom. To be ourselves okay so i hear a lot of times when people talk about your money is my money you know my that's money is my money my your money, money is our money, is our money. <laughs> yes. well um i like that his money is my money but i feel the importance of also having savings personal savings like i'm really big on it and i have always been entrepreneurial and um so here's the thing um people think that when you say your, my money is my money is for disaster maybe not what if one day we get into trouble as an organization and we need to get saved you know yeah. I, I, I get to bring up my money because he he can't he, if something were to happen and god forbid um our enemies because it's not us in Jesus' name. Don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, you know, fall on your face. Nigerians. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You know? Okay. Like, okay, we had, we had a situation last year where, um, because we said we we're going to keep it real. So we had a situation last year, and I'm hoping that, like, a husband and wife who wants to go into business are watching. And um, we had expended our resources for something that we're working on, and we needed to get things done. I, my, some money that I had was tied in investment. Oh, I just made some calls. And, you know, I always tell people that if, if, if my husband were to tell his age to people, nobody would believe, you know, because um, he works so hard. You know, when you see somebody work really hard, he burns the midnight candle, he sacrifices everything for his family. If he does get into like this tight fix, Narrow. yeah, oh. and I have what it takes to like Cushy. give him a yoke, you know, I will. I will need to share. I will. I will. I will do what I need to do That's to just great. give him respite. I can collect my money back oh, mm. when we get the back. <laughs> women. Mm -hmm. I, I may collect my money back, but at that time, he needs my help. I will. I will do what it is needful. You know, with, with what you've just shared, I'm sorry, guys, that it seems as if I'm taking on, you know. But I'm just enjoying listening to you, and I like the fact that you're keeping it. it. How would you enjoy it? And, and I like the fact that you're keeping it real, yeah. because on this platform, we keep it real, and this is our talk here. Yeah. You know, because I feel that most times when you eat, 
these challenges in your business, I'm mm -hmm. talking from an entrepreneur, you know, do you think that um, people that you have met during the course of work, maybe some of your clients, you know, have been able to rose to one of the challenges that you just um, shared with us? Our, our clients, our clients are like our family members, like the way that our clients love us, it's, 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 it's almost scary. Like we have people that mention our names in rooms that we've never been in and they're championing our courses. I, I mean, there was, there was a day I was in one traffic in Lagos, you know those tra traffic that you've been there for like four hours. Mm -hmm. I wonder God when, you know, and I get a call and I'm, I'm told I need you to be at Polo Club at so, so, so and so time. And I'm like, I can't be there. Like, like another event planner called me. I can't be there. Like, I'm in this crazy traffic. And she goes, your auntie called your name. They want you to be there. I was like, I'm in traffic. Like, it's really tough. But um, she now says, we need you here now. I don't know how you're going to do it, but you need to get here as soon as you can. Um, we, we have enjoyed goodwill. We have enjoyed goodwill in an unbelievable way. You might look at it from goodwill. I think it's about um, um, acting of professionalism, giving your best in any job that is being given to you. Because if you do not give your best, there's no how you can have access, continuous access, access. and that goodwill that you just touched on. Masha, quickly. Really? Anyway, I was just enjoying the couple and your talk. My next question actually was going to be, as a couple, how you get to work together and how you draw the boundaries. Because, um, I mean, working together, you're exposed to all the clients she's exposed to. You're also exposed to all the clients mm -hmm. he's exposed to when it comes to the opposite sex and all that. My wife and I get to work ah. together in several... Well, you're heading to... Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. It's real talk. Uh, my wife and I get to work together in, in okay. most of the businesses that we do and own. And people get to ask me all the time, how do I get to work with my wife? How do we maintain harmony and all of that? Now, you've talked about how you get to maintain your... Fi um, run yeah. your finances. I'd like you to touch on how you get to maintain peace, understanding and harmony uh, between the both of you. Yeah. I mean, jealousy is a natural phenomenon. Oh, yeah. I mean, there are times when you see him with a client, female client, and you Not know, you get ideas. Not just a beautiful client. <laughs> 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 I know. Okay, so how so does it work? Just let us know how you okay, handle so, that. Um, most times, I feel like the most important thing is for you to know that you are on the same team. One. And number two, yeah, you can see someone with a female client who is not a threat whatsoever to you. She's just bringing in the money. And I need the money. What so. are the ones that are threats? But the, there are some people who... They will, the they'll, line. Yeah, they'll step to you, not just cross the line. They'll actually step to you. Um, anybody who knows me <laughs> knows that I put boundaries in place. I wish I can okay. ask you another question. That <laughs> this, is, because this is my pertinent question. As okay. business partners and as husband and wife, mm -hmm. I know that there is no how, like just coming from the question that Marshall asked, mm -hmm. there's no how you people will not ha be a loggerhead. Especially when you're maybe planning or budgeting and this is the cost and somebody is trying to like, you know what, let's spend 1,000 and somebody says, you know what, want to we make it drive home. How do you, now you are the ED of the company, executive director and he's the managing director. I'm sure that by proxy of decision, however, title, but how do you now manage from business partners back into the role of husband and wife that you know what, work I've gone, let's now do house matter. How do you juggle? Uh, so, really, because first of all, we're uh, parties. <laughs> we've been together for so long. Oh, so, so long is how long? We've been together for fifteen, 15 years. years. Well, so Ma yeah. We married for how long? For ten years. years. Yeah. We've been so, for five years. Um, it's it's yeah. Of course, we have so many of those. You know, um, decisions come. Mm -hmm. She has a perspective. I have a perspective. It's natural. And we're both but very we sit down. Yeah. So you know, mm -hmm. and we try. And so who bends out. later on? Yeah. So it depends. Sometimes you know we find a compromise. Um, other times where there's no compromise, if you say somebody would eventually say, okay. Let's go your way, but, but <laughs> the next one will be my way. Uh, you know, you know. Um, but but you the end of the day, your fingers uh, too. Exactly. So mm -hmm. we both 
have an understanding that when we get to those decisions, it we hold each other's hands, we jump off the cliff together. It has to work. If God yeah, will catch it has us, to work. Will catch I, us. I, I wish yeah. I can touch on <laughs> I can I can touch on the longevity of you guys' togetherness, but I know um, they will still start running commentary in my ears now that we need to go down the last segment. <laughs> so, really guys, let me say fun. many thanks for all that you have shared thus far. It's been an interesting um, show with all that you've shared. Thank and you. I hope that you've been able to impact those who have been listening to us. But before we let you go, there's this last segment that we call Trending Stories. Stories that binds us together as family. And thank God you're in the event industry because it's always it's very full in the <laughs> trending stories. And one of the trending stories that caught our attention is that of Aisha Bwari that back said the punishment for the killer of five-year-old uh, Anifa um, in Kano, the little uh, beautiful um, girl Child. that passed on, you know, mm. Um, mm. I think it's important for me to come to you first uh, as a mother and somebody who just had a baby during pandemic and she's back and with <laughs> she's not back. You know, oh my God. So let's come to you for what's your take on this? It's pretty sad, but what's your take on it's, this? It's, it's, this story is very triggering for me because I have really young children. Mm. Um, and um, it just shows us what the state of our nation is, how people can do literally anything to get by. Um, I just feel like we have to um, constantly um, be very serious about, um, I don't, I don't, I really, you, you can't even say maybe they didn't watch The Little Child enough. You can't, you can't say that. We're just saying, God deliver us from evil. Because yeah, we yeah. really do not know who is watching us. Being the proprietor of the school. Yeah, because, I mean, this, I, we leave our kids, we take our kids to school every day. And with the hope that we're going to go back to pick them. I mean, God forbid. You know, so the prayer is we should constantly cover our children in benediction. And hope for the best. Mm. You know, and I, I, I don't know what else. Because... Really, All right, many thanks for that. So I think much. it's important for me to come to one of the proprietors on this platform, which is Masha. Masha, what's your take on this? Oh, yeah. Uh, I was wondering who that was. <laughs> anyway, yeah, when I saw that post on a WhatsApp group I belong, mm -hmm. I just, my comment was, can't he just be annihilated already? Mm -hmm. Can we just get this guy annihilated already? It's sad that that happened and i i know that the full rot of the law will be brought upon him it's um it's gotten already international uh, attraction and i do know that the guy would pay daily for it but what i do not like about the story is the aftermath the uh, government revoking licenses of all the private schools in kano state i see it as as the government chasing shadows i mean if this happened in one really? school yeah if this happened in one school you should face it squarely I know that uh, I heard that youth burnt down the school. Yeah. Maybe that was jungle justice, yeah. call it whatever it yeah. is, call it fate or anything. But I mean, having to now allow that one singular incident affect other oh, schools, yeah, every so other cool. private school. Oh, wow. I think that was wrong. No, Marsha, I think that you are you are speaking from a place of an entrepreneur and a place of someone who owns a school, and it is acceptable because, as far as I'm concerned, I feel that you thank own God, Z Edge. Yes, and correct. Another management or um, HR company does something and then you the government then everybody. says Z-Edge and every other person All right, so I, I'm getting somewhere. As far as I'm concerned, I feel that um, there are due diligence that the government are supposed to carry on mm -hmm. before opening a school and they've seen mm -hmm. that um, there are loopholes already. Hence the reason why something like this happened. We've seen how people can just come up one day and just decide to say they want to be event planners yeah. without any yeah. experience, Prior without experience. not sending themselves to school. So if you ask me, I'm saying, thank God, you know, uh, Kano revoked the license of these private schools in Kano, you know, and I feel that, you know, just can we actually visualize how this girl was kidnapped for two weeks? Can we imagine what this she girl would have something. gone through? In t for two weeks, and can we, you know, before she was given right po rat poison. poison, you know, and I'm asking myself, these people are callous, people are wicked, mm -hmm. and Nigeria has happened to um, Anifa again, and, and how did this people. man, how did this man, you know, get the license in the first place, just like what I'm emphasizing, that, you know, as school. far as I'm concerned, sometimes when one thing happens, it wakes up what should have been done in the first place, and I think that that's exactly what the government are doing. And I feel that they need to create um, some spring up schools uh, within 
within the state because of this experience but when they are bringing up this uh, spring up schools of course due diligence will be done everybody will bring in their documentation it's just like you opening a business now there must be csc there must be certain things that you must have put in place so if you ask me you know uh we keep losing innocent souls you know um to this modern day stupidity stupidity of adoption and ransom because it has become a culture I, however we look at it and the security agency keeps failing us. I, it's sad again that I have one of the um, security people on this platform, but the question is, I'm also one of the daughters of the security people, but, the, but we know, we know, how, uh, you know, in my head, you know, when I was reading or listening to or gathering um, news about, about this content, mm -hmm. I'm asking myself, when they were placing a call, you know, to the parents oh. and asking for all this ransom, six million, mm -hmm. this and this, yeah. debating and the likes and all. I'm wondering, are there no communication gadget that you can use to track these people? Yeah. I'm sorry to say this, that's, even me, this yeah. Shanko, you know, I, when you want to dig. if you want to dig, you, you can dig. dig and, do you understand? Not to talk of telecommunication where I expect them to do uh, better. Where I expect that when something like this come uh, happen, we all can come together and quickly say that okay, you know what? What happens to you happens to me because it could have been another person. So as many of the schools have not been registered as we have seen, because some of the things that I have gathered thus far is the fact that the school was not even registered in the first place with the state government. So that says wow. a lot to me about the state government. In in, in Kano about their negligence and uh, and even the past parents. But on a, on a final note, I just feel that a note of warning that I want to put out there is the fact that we need to be more security conscious, just like you emphasized earlier. And I feel that we need to be more vigilant and we need to be double check about the environment of our, of our children, of the students. Because most times it seems as if all we want to do is just to put our, 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 our children in a big structural yeah. school, an expensive school, yeah, and without, you understand, without mm -hmm. us doing mm -hmm. the due the diligence. Homework. And I think that that is where the parents need to take ownership. It's not just you pointing fingers at the government. The four fingers are pointing back at you. Yep. Quickly, that means I think what I, what I would see on it is that the capital punishment is... Com Aisha Bwari clamoring for capital punishment is late. Because all of this under the law should have been enacted as a structure. Yeah. We need yeah. to have it down. Mm -hmm. Now... After the case of Sylvester Romani, the Dowen College students, mm -hmm. other students have passed away in yeah. different schools. Yeah. I know of a school in Ondo, there's a school in Akwaibom, there's another school there's in school the in East, in, in Kaduna. Oh, wow. And yes, that asleep. students have died. And at the end of the day, we are still here with Marolin on Evil Sylvester's case. And it is another eye opener happening far away in Kano. Then, after the deed has been done, we are looking for capital punishment. What was it that, what is it that our law, the law, the whole law structure, and all the sounds that we are producing, what have they been doing that we don't have capital punishment in all place right, many, until when things happen? All right, yes, many, okay. many thanks, so many, okay. many thanks <laughs> for all that you've shared thus far. And I think quickly, the second trendy story that caught our attention is that of the super ego steam mm. that sneaked into Nigeria yeah, after <laughs> AFCOM failure. And I'm calling me to the guy first because i know that he did not give you a submission you know what's your take with uh because i know that men love football football unites us as yeah. uh, as a nation what's your take on this i remember watching that uh that match uh, when i go home hope <laughs> you <laughs> ate she was, I was laughing as we <laughs> <laughs> um but you know what i think we should cut them some slack yeah. um um and i, I want to point out something um, the trend on social media has been really horrible. You have people going to these guys' pages yep, DMs. and, um, you know, giving death threats and being very abusive. It is bad and it's wrong. Yes, they're bad, you know, people laugh and all that, but there's, you know, when you take it too far. Boundaries. So, of course, them sneaking in is not a surprise because some crazy person might be on the road now with a gun or something. So. Um, we should cut them some slack. I, they didn't want to drop out as well. I'm sure they wanted to go for glory as well. Mm. Um, what happened, happened. Uh, next time, we should be better prepared. Mm. And, and you know, uh, hey, it, and then all the well. distractions, <laughs> you know. Um, the, I don't know why people and, have been uh, talking about this distraction. <laughs> well, distractions, distractions, our, distractions our people say, are everywhere. But it, it, actually, it, a day before that, Kike, I, I told you not to make that call. Uh, which that which call. You have been calling people. Why? Just video call that day. We shouldn't have had that video they call. Saw all right, guys. Out. All right, guys. All right, guys. What <laughs> now? If you ask me, mm. and I'm talking as um, from experience now as um, football director for five years under MTN Football Scholar, and I must say that, you know, um, 
I know we expect something, or so would I say something better, you know, with the momentum that it started mm -hmm. when um, the mm -hmm. um, AFCON people, you know, it's like they raised the bar, everybody's yeah. talking, everybody's donating money. Mm -hmm. And um, of, of course, one of the airlines that is also the sponsor of this program as well, so, you know, helped in, Epis helped in actually, you know, supporting them, you know, so just give them some level of ginger, Cushion. you know, and, and people like incentive, however we look at it. Yeah. However, I just feel that no one can deny the fact that we could, uh, we, we, we could, we could win this, if we could, we could have win this tournament, if you ask me, but uh, it still remains a game. It's a part, it's part of life. It's just like in yeah. life, all sort of things have been thrown at you. One minute you're down, the next exactly. minute you're up again. So mm -hmm. I, I feel that we should just understand that um, when it comes to losing, it's something that we need to prepare ourselves for because exactly. sometimes when we are winning, we are like, oh, we are winning, like but we should nothing. be prepared for because losing. We should be prepared that be. sometimes yeah, everybody can be we should be prepared that sometimes we could get defeated by our opponent just like the way that we too would defeat our opponents exactly. and which is part of life so let's accept our boys they are our heroes they are they put in their proud. best Let, let's look forward to a better uh, um, and it's winning right. future com competition and look how, how we, what, what can we do better as a team because it's teamwork in terms of our fun in terms of uh, CAF in terms of even the boys yes, are, yes, as no. well and I feel mm. that most times you know why would you come to your country sneaking you know right. sometimes I feel mm, that no. failure is feedback sometimes when people challenge you when people say certain mm -hmm. things to you it's for you to look in what i said you know what am i accepting this i want to speak up for myself i want to do certain things you understand mm -hmm. which is also the same thing but you know quickly Dami, i, I think i would not accept you know journalism or broadcasting sometimes we can be very we can drive to the cliff mm -hmm. i think i will not accept that um uh, what would I call it now? That word sneaking. Yes, their flights came in at um, in Amdiaziku Airport at um, in Abuja at about 1 10 a.m. for reasons known to them. What if they were stranded or something? I mean, like he said, you should Late let people seat, let maybe. let people just on thrive. Whatever it is, this is the first one of the first times that um, Nigerian super eagles are really making us happy. Mm. I mean, they beat Tunisia, they beat um, Sudan. They had this Guinea where like Guinea sell over their dead body. They will die. They, they've done pa -ra -ra, pa -pa for them. So you people <laughs> should even appreciate. We know, of course, we know even what is happening within the NFF circle and the whole um, leadership thingy. Mm -hmm. So Nigerians, let's encourage our own. Let's have people did 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 that mm -hmm. you push some people inside when. Mm -hmm. Let's encourage our Nigerians, own. Nigerians, <laughs> you need to understand that there are certain things that come to us that we need to continually. Uh, face up to to embrace the challenges regardless of however you find yourself in your Absolutely career field. but with that we've come to the end of another interesting episode of real talk with k and i must say it was an interesting episode isn't it guys yeah it was uh, having course. a husband and wife and doing having business. a resourceful guest that is mr and mrs olatunde daniel the founders of adventure adventure right? gosh adventure and the culture <laughs> my name remains kikelo and of course you have been i'm actually no, yeah. <laughs> you have not changed i'm lola Banire. thank all you all right thank you guys many thanks for watching bye now <laughs>